Dr. Lewis said, your mother's not going to be here much longer. And I told him where I was. He said, well, you go ahead and get a good night's sleep. You can't do anything here. She'll just be with us a few more hours. And I went to bed, but who can sleep? You know, I, I must have laid there a whole 10 minutes before I realized I had to get up, get everybody else up, pack the car, and go to the all night. Back to Jesse Holman Jones. She waited on me. I hold her hand. Pray with her. Before she slipped out to move to her new home. Every time I hear that song, it takes me back to that long night and that morning, but I know she waited. And I'm glad I got up and come home. <clears throat> Today, most ever song that we've sang and what you've heard has been about the blood. You'll turn with me to Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. It's a hard book to find. It's between Philippians and the New Testament and Thessalonians. So it's just two or three pages, so it's, I'll give you a minute or two to find it. Um, C O L O S S I E N S. Freshman in Bible college, the first time I sat down in a class, they said, oh, One thing I want you to know. If you can't say all the books of the Bible in this first week, you're going to be in trouble. And if you can't spell them and put them in order by the end of the semester, you're going to be in trouble. And I just looked around at myself and thought, I am in trouble. <laughs> Amen, brother. And uh, I went home and sat down at a desk just started writing Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and just over and over and over. And uh, I don't know how I made it, but I did. But I want to talk to you today. I'm going to read two texts to you. The next one is found in uh, 1 John. In... Uh, Verse 7, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. That's just very few pages on toward the back of your Bible. There's 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. We're going to be in 1st John. Two Texas. And I want to tell you, uh, Nicole, I just told her the subject. And Lynette couldn't have picked out better songs, and especially the special. For I titled this, I Have Been to Calvary. I Have Been to Calvary. What makes a difference at Calvary? There's a lot of people crucified on Calvary. Galgotha, the place of the skull. It was a place where they crucified criminals. And yet, it was a place that the most righteous man, the God-man Christ Jesus, shed his blood. And uh, I want you to listen as I read two texts. <coughs> First of all, the price in Colossians chapter 1. In verse 
verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. He made peace through the blood of his cross. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. He reconciled everything depends on the blood. That verse makes it very clear. And then in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the what? The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from how many stains? All of them. All of them. Four. It washes every sin away. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I can't hardly wait for the song of the invitation that Nicole said they picked out. Couldn't be better. <clears throat> Would you pray with me and for me before I try to bring the message? Father, we thank you for what our hearts have already felt. We thank you for our visitors in Sunday school today. We thank you for helping us teach the lesson. We thank the Lord for the ones that are here today. It's never an accident where we are. The steps of a righteous person's order of the Lord. May we say as a psalmist, it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord. Forgive us where we fail you. Speak, Lord, to the one that's nearest eternity. We know by listening to people that we ask for some to stand today that's older than anybody else here. That doesn't mean they'll be the next ones to leave this world. Caskets come in all sizes. Lord, I pray that you'll speak loud and clear to all of us today. Our hearts leap with joy when we sing Jewel able to be with us this morning. And I pray that she'll continue to improve. I thank you, Lord, for answering prayer. Thank you for the time that we had with Brittany Smith this week. And pray that she'll grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, Father, speak to all of us today and help us to be obedient sons and daughters. And do what you'd have us to do. We pray especially for those that was just mentioned with 20 tumors. Lord, and four children and a wife. Lord, give them peace and draw them close to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Several things that I want to bring to your attention this morning about the blood. Not only Has printing presses been rearranged to take the blood out of so many church songs? But I've been told that there are now some Bibles that don't have the blood in them. And without blood, there's no remission of sin, Amen. there's no forgiveness. 
you do away with the blood, you might as well put the Bible on the shelf for the rest of the books. Ever since I've been saved, I've, I can see the blood in almost every chapter and almost every verse when I read it. For it's by the blood of Jesus Christ that we're forgiven and redeemed. It necessitated his descent from heaven. He said, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through the poverty, through his poverty, might be made rich. It necessitated his denial. His rejection made him different than everybody else. You either deny him or you accept him. You've got to do one or the other. There's no in the middle. Oh, whatever will be, will be. Don't work with Jesus. You either accept him 100% or you deny him 100%. He himself made peace through the blood of his cross, I read to you. It's a personal thing. And I just have four or five points that I want to share with you. In 1 John 1 and 7 that I read to you, the Bible teaches us that the blood redeems us. In Revelation chapter 5, and I, you might want to turn with me to some of these, unless you already know them, but in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9, the Bible says this, and they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by how much money? By the blood. Out of ever kindred and tongue and people and nation. He's redeemed us by the power of the blood, not money. Your money can't do it. It's just the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Been redeemed, the Bible says in Revelation 5 and 9. Do you know what the word redeem means? It means to buy back. I'm supposed to pawn something. I've never pawned anything in my life. I've been in several pawn shops to help people get back what they pawned that they didn't want to lose and they're down to the last day and I've been guilty of that. I was looking to buy a grill one time and a man named Greenwald while we were working on Regina's sister's house I said, if I just had a drill big enough to take this half-inch bit, it would make this work so much easier. He said, I know where you can get one for 50 bucks, a good one. And I said, where? He said, at the pawn shop, here's the ticket. So I bought a good drill for 50 bucks. <clears throat> the Bible with all the bits with it. But I got redeemed for far more than $50. It cost the blood of heaven to redeem me, to buy me back from Satan and to buy you back. The Bible tells us that not only the blood redeems us, buys us back from Satan, but the blood cleanses us, 1 John 1, 7, uh, that I read to you. By the blood of Jesus Christ, you are cleansed. 
What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood. And we're living in a day and an hour when preachers won't even preach about the blood. They won't preach about hell. They won't preach about the blood. They want to make everything seem all right just by fairy tales almost. <coughs> but we need to quit tiptoeing through the tulips <coughs> while Rome burns. We need to preach the word of God straight. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. And when he said that we were redeemed by the blood, we're bought by the blood, we're washed by the blood, I don't understand it. I wish I could articulate where I could tell you how blood can make something clean. But his blood is the only thing that can make you clean. Amen. There's a lot of things I don't understand. I don't understand how a black cow can eat green grass and give white milk. I don't understand some of these things. But I do know that the Bible teaches nothing but the blood. How can you get confused about that? Somebody says, how can I be saved? You can be saved only by receiving what Jesus did on Calvary. He bled and died for you. The blood that flowed from his body washed all of my sins away, washed all of your sins away, and whosoever will, let him come, and there's still power in the blood. Amen. Man, I'll never forget at Swannanoa, and we're close to the Swannanoa River, the first time I ever heard the song, There's Power in the Blood, and the windows were up. We didn't have air conditioning in our church, and the evangelist that was speaking that day said this. He said, you know, he said, right out there is a river, and you know wherever there's a river, there's mosquitoes. And he said, when a mosquito flies in here and bites one of us, he ought to go away singing, there's power in the blood. <laughs> you know, and I've never forgot that. There's power in the blood to wash away every sin. And I've heard people say, preacher, can't wash away my sin. But I got a word from the Lord today. He can wash away the vilest sin Amen. and make the vilest sin clean. Amen. He can wash away all sin if it's brought to him and placed at the foot of the cross. He can make it white as snow. Those of you that's worked in any kind of mechanic shop or anywhere around, you know you can take a clean white rag and work with it that day and get it in the grease and the oil and the grime. You'll never see it that white again. The best fuller soap will never make it that white again. But the Bible said that the blood of Jesus Christ will take your sin and make it whiter than snow. Man, I've just not seen many things whiter than snow. Isaiah said in Isaiah 118, Come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as black as coal, though they be red like crimson, they can be washed whiter than snow by the blood. And if Isaiah said that, I believe it. The Bible is full of the blood of Christ from one end to the other. And the third thing that I want you to see, we are justified by the blood. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, I won't read all these verses, but I'll give them to you because I don't want to be accused of not preaching the Bible. I feel my sermons full of Bible or I don't preach. And it says in Romans 5 and 9, we are justified not through our righteousness. We're justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's him that we find strength to move. 
It's in him that we live and move and have our being. It's in him that we're made clean. It's in him that we're able to stand before his father on judgment day. It's in him that we'll be able to go to heaven. It's his blood that cleanses all sin. And then in number four, we find in Colossians 1.20 that I've already read to you, we have peace through his blood. Never in my life felt a peace like I felt the day that I got saved. Right. The burdens were lifted at Calvary because of the blood. And there's not a peace in this world that can fill your heart like knowing you've been under the blood. There's a fountain filled with blood flows from Emmanuel's vein. Beneath that fountain, I lose all my guilt and stain. It cleanses our guilt. It washes away our stain. And he becomes our advocate. He becomes our lawyer. And he's never lost a case. And if he's representing me and he is, I don't have to worry. The Bible says that we have peace. I've got peace. Peace like a river. Peace that surpasses understanding. Peace that this world knows nothing of. Peace where you can lay your head down in a world filled with trouble and turmoil and problems, <coughs> knowing that you're washed in the blood. And if you take your last breath today, here in this world, it'll be your first breath over there Amen. in another world. Amen. Peace like a river. And then we find the fifth thing, the blood brings us nigh, even to God. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. Let me find it. If I can and read it to you. I thought I could remember it. And quote it to you. you've got to remember it's nothing but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 in verse 13 says this but now in Christ Jesus ye that means you who were sometime were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You know what that says? That says at one time I was walking a long ways from Jesus. I was headed down the wrong road, going the wrong direction. And somebody talked to me about the blood of Christ and I accepted Jesus his blood washed my sins away, and it's like a magnet. It pulled me back, made nigh unto God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we can't approach God without the blood. We can't approach him unless we've been made clean. With dirty garments we shall not enter in. We can enter in only when our robes are washed white in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know why people want to pick up the Bible and go to the pulpit and talk about how good you are 
and how wonderful we are and how great it's going to be when we stand before God. When my Bible says there's none good, no, not one. We can only be good through him. We only have the power through him. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. And we can only get close to God through the blood. We'll see that in a moment. <clears throat> Number six says, we are sanctified through the blood. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 12. We are sanctified through the blood. That's another way of saying that your bill is paid. Sanctified through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I'm going to turn from my first scripture way back in the Old Testament today in Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12 in verse 13. The Bible said, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses for you all. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of the Egyptians. You see, Jesus said there had come a time when he would come after his people. He said there will come a time when judgment will come upon this world. And he told them that in Exodus chapter 12. He told them, you go out and you get the best animal. One without spot, one without blemish. You don't take the worst. You get the best one. And you sacrifice it and you take the blood and you put it over the doorpost. For tonight at midnight the death angel will pass over every house, every barn. <coughs> and without the blood being on the house, the first child the first male will die. Pharaoh laughed at Moses. He didn't believe it. Pharaoh was awakened and told, your son is dead. And as a cry went out all through the land, Death and ever home, except the homes that had the blood. That's still true today. Amen. When Jesus comes, the only ones that's going to be saved, the only ones that's not going to die the second death, will have the blood. Up. And Jesus said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. You'll be okay, is what he's saying. I'm so glad today that in May 1970, 
I was washed in the blood. Swan and Oil Free Will Baptist Church. On the right side of the altar, the left to you, my life changed. I felt the change inside. I had the blood applied. Preacher, I don't understand that. Listen, neither did I. I just knew if I stayed where I was, the preacher said, I want you to raise your hand if you don't know you're going to heaven or not, lift it high so I can see it. And sitting almost in the back of the church, ten men couldn't keep my hand down. <coughs> and he said, now I want to ask you a question. How can you lead your family toward heaven when you've admitted you're on your way to hell? And we're going to sing a verse of the invitational hymn and they started singing and I reluctantly started to move and he said, you take the first step, God will help you with the next one. Some of you might not know it, but I walked the aisle and I knelt there. Unbeknowing to me, my wife was right behind me and she walked the aisle and knelt right there. We were saved in the same service by the same God and the same blood. That's been over 40 years ago. And let me say in closing this while our piano player comes. Nicole gets a song invitation. The blood has never lost its power. Amen. What it did for us back in May 1970, it can do for you today. It still has the power. To wash away all sin. But preacher, if you just knew all the sin I've committed and just knew my life, you wouldn't say that. I knelt with a person, two people, three people, and I've heard them say that, and I said, listen, you're the reason Jesus died. The sin in your life's the reason he went to the cross. His blood and wash away your sin today. It can make the vilest sinner clean, but you've got to take the first step. He said today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart to come to me. But y'all don't understand that, neither did I. But I know more today than I did then. And it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. And I asked you to do that today if you're not so. Would you stand with me while we pray? <coughs> Our Father in heaven, there are those here today that think they have to understand everything before they make a decision. Help them to know there's no way we'll ever understand it all till we get to heaven. But Lord, help them to understand this, that they can't go till their sins are forgiven. You can forgive them. You can forget them. You can wash them away today by faith because you spilled your blood on Calvary. Lord, I beg you in Christ's name. And I'd say in front of all of these people, I would crawl from the back of this church to the front if it would make a difference in anybody's life. Lord, I can't do that. It would make no difference. It's an individual thing, and that individual has to come and say yes to you. Lord, help them to know how much you love them. 
you died for them. May they feel that same power that Regina and I felt in May 1970. May their life be changed today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. While we sing, if God spoke to you, I want you to come. I'll pray with you. I'll show you what you need to do. But you've got to make the first step. Sweet God, oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Say, pray for me. Just lift your hand up. I'll pray for you every day this week, I promise. Father in heaven, I believe with all my heart that I've preached what you wanted me to preach today. Lord, help me never to be afraid to preach the blood. For that's the only thing that will save mankind. I'll believe it till the day that you take me home. Lord, I pray for these that raise their hands. That 
tell somewhere, some way, this week, find a place in the Word of God. Read and pray. Confess the blood over their sin. Lord, and help them to memorize my phone number. I'll be glad to go anytime, anywhere. To bring somebody to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Gives my heart a thrill to read the word of God to somebody and pray with them. Bless and keep us. The Lord be with the visitors that told us they'd be here tonight. I pray that you'll speak loud and clear to them. And I thank you for what Annette and Nicole have put together. In my opinion, it couldn't have been any better. I thank you for the service today. And I thank you for the saving power of the blood. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. <coughs> See you at 6 o'clock tonight.